Hello, everyone. I am so happy to be here tonight with Debbie Malone. And Debbie has just had a very exciting day. Uh, Debbie's an advocate from the Northwest Georgia area. And I'm just so happy to see you. It's been such a long time. Um, and you know, we've known each other for some years now. Um, but I, I want to hear about what happened. And so I'm just going to dive in, Debbie, because uh, at, when COVID hit, you were very concerned about one particular issue as it relates to your family. So can you tell us what that issue was? Uh, yes, I have a daughter that lives in a community living arrangement, which is known as group home. And uh, she's 43. She had been there for five, four, four years, four or five years. And I was visiting her like three or four times a week. And then the visits just stopped. And so it's been a year since I've seen her. So um, tell us a little bit about uh, the visits. I know some folks were allowing visits in the yard, a certain uh, amount of distance away, but that wasn't quite working for you and your daughter, right? No, she didn't. Yeah, so tell us about that, yeah. Well, the first time um, I sat in the car and she was on the porch and we were talking on the phone because she can she can do the phone really well if it's on speakerphone, she just has to talk. Um, so she kept looking around for me and, you know, she didn't even know I was in the car. And she kept saying, when are you coming to visit? And um, I said, I can't do that anymore. So um, I didn't, you know, I think it was hard on both of us. Okay. Okay. So you decided that you wanted to do something about this, even though we're in this really difficult time, you decided that something needs to change because I really want to see my daughter in person. So what did you do? Well, I had joined this group. It's called uh, Caregivers for Compromise. Isolation Kills Two, And it's a national group, but we have a Georgia chapter. And it's on Facebook. Anybody can join. Um, and so that's where I got started. And then one of the ladies, uh, Gail Manter, was doing, um, wanted to get up a, a executive order that the governor could sign and for essential visitors. And he could do that, you know, just like overnight. I honestly don't know where that is. But in the meantime... Okay. Um, I heard about the uh, bill HB 290, and they were talking about it on the on the uh, Facebook page. And so I just got started in that. And um, they, one thing I wanted to make sure was a lot of it was language was nursing homes mm -hmm. in, the, in the long term care, and in one of the executive orders, for whatever reason. Um, CLAs were excluded. So my thing was I wanted to make sure that they were going to be included. And okay. so I started calling everybody and because I knew they were going to have, um, well, thought they were going to vote on the bill. Um, and I, I got um, Brit Brittany Ellison and she's an advocate and she just got right on it and Ed uh, Setzler is the uh, writer of the bill and so they did they changed the language so it would include uh, community living arrangements and we testified that was like a Monday or something and we testified on Wednesday so I went up there and I testified and then we thought they were going to vote last week and so I watched it live and the chairman, um, he really wants it to go through. And so he's, you know, they're making sure the language is what needs to be done before it goes to the House and the Senate. So we thought they were going to vote on it today. So myself and several other ladies went um, to discover they, <laughs> they weren't going to vote on it today. It's going to be yeah. Monday. Um, but I got to meet some of the representatives. So that was nice. So there, this was no Zoom testimony that you did the first time. You actually went down to the Capitol. Yes. 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 
So um, how did you know how to do all this, uh, Debbie? What, how well, did you know? I mean, well, how, how did you kind of know the system? Well, let me just tell you this. Um, I took a class about probably about 10 years ago called uh, Partners for Policymaking. And there was this brilliant leader. I mean, she just, she was just brilliant. And her name was Rita Young. And um, so that's where I learned all my advocacy. And Well, uh, 10 years ago, that is such a long time. And, and you are using all of those skills today. That's, still, that's amazing. Yeah. Yes. So what are your hopes for the bill? Um, if it goes into effect, it won't go into effect until July. So that's still a little ways off. Um, I just, I, you know, even if somehow it didn't help with this uh, COVID, say they say uh, in a month or two, okay, y'all can have visits. But if the bill goes through, it's going to help the next time this happens and the hospitals and nursing homes won't be allowed to keep people out, keep family out. Now they can limit, you know, there's limits in the bill mm -hmm. to how long they can stay. Um, but they can't keep them out for a year, you know? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's really good to hear. You've got to feel really good about getting so involved during this time, because again, I know it's been very frustrating uh, not being able to see your daughter face to face and in person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's beyond frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beyond. Uh, yes. Anguish. Aching. Yes. Yeah. Aching. So there you go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. But it's just not, it's not just me. You know, there's a lot of other people in the group too that are working really hard. So I, definitely. I yeah. Intended when they first asked me, um, I said, you know, I said, I'm really kind of, tired of advocating. I said, I'll be y'all's cheerleader. Next thing I know, I'm at the Capitol testifying. So <laughs> it kind of gets in your blood, doesn't it? A little yeah. bit. Yeah, it does. it does. It does. Well, thank you so much, Debbie, being, for being such a shining example of how we can all get involved during COVID. And thank you so much for your advocacy and traveling all that way from you're in Rome, right? Rome yeah. area, uh -huh. all the way down to the Capitol to testify just thank you for all the energy that you're putting towards that best of success. I'm going to post the uh, AJC article on the page as well for people to take a look at. Okay, great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you for having thank me. Thank you so it. much. I appreciate it. This was good impromptu to everybody. Yeah. Good, good to see you too. Good. All right. Take care. Bye. Keep writing those books. I will. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye.